Ladies and gentlemen, today is September 3rd, 2017, and this is the K and Kale Show, and more importantly, Concept Art Boot Camp, Day 7, where we're learning to become amazing artists, strike out on our own, and become the next big thing. Today, we're going to be learning about something very important, and granted, yes, I know, there's going to be a lot of words, and there's going to be a little bit of reading, but I'm going to be walking you through a very important subject. This has to do with mental game. This has to do with things that you should be thinking about before you even begin to draw a character, and this is... Basically, Designing Interesting Characters 101. And we're going to be breaking it down into three simple steps. So there are going to be archetypes, tropes, and spins. Now, what the heck is that? Well, it's actually a very simple way to take some of your favorite characters, which we will be doing in just a moment, and break them down into three key components. And the reason why it's three is because, well, we like to keep things simple here. Well, actually, let's just go ahead and jump into those. Let's jump into those. Uh, this is going to be archetypes, tropes, and spins. All of these things go into creating an interesting, yet familiar, unique character. So, archetypes, what, what is that? Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into it. Uh, this has to do with alignment. This is the most general theme of the character. This is actually, arguably, one of the least important. Because most of the time, when you're creating a character for your comic, or for your show, or video game, they're going to be a hero. They're going to be someone who is, like, idealizes... The, the, the good parts of a, of a person, right? The things that we all aspire to be. So don't be afraid if you always find yourself going for a hero. However, there could be also other things. It could be anti-heroes, someone who is the main character of the story but doesn't uh, embody the usual he heroic traits like courage or the sense of morality. You know, there can be like weird little things about them that don't make them the typical hero. I like things like that. Uh, there could be things like this person represents light or dark or maybe the combination, the mixture of light versus dark. Uh, outlaws, lovers, jesters, rulers, uh, all those things. Uh, you can look those more up online. Again, don't want to stress too much about that. Just know that the most common one is hero, and we'll get into that in just a moment. Next is tropes. What are tropes? I'm sure you've heard this all the time. This is usually what people come to you and they say, I need, like, artists, concept artists, I need you to create for me. A gunslinger we need to create a pirate we need to create a ninja for this comic for this video game and oftentimes a lot of people stop here they might have a little bit of an idea of like oh here's like their story of where they come from and you know this and that but they're lacking one crucial thing and that is a spin they're lacking the final thing that is going to take your character from something familiar right like the pirate or the ninja or the zombie soldier those types of things uh but they're missing the crucial spin and these are things that i like to call uh basically things that could make your character imperfect or things that will make the character unique or different and these could be things like obsessions these could be flaws weaknesses uh, you could also mix multiple tropes. You could do zombie soldier, or you could do gunslinger scientist. You know, there's all kinds of weird things that you can mix together to start generating ideas in your mind, right? <laughs> but I just imagine the, the guns have, like, the, the ammo is literally, like, a beaker full of some sort of some concoction that he made in the lab, and he, and he shoots that or whatever. <laughs> but anyway, like, things like that will just start to get your mind going. Um but also things can things for spins can be their source of power i found that the source of power uh can really help to create a spin on the character or their history okay now this is all well and good i'm sure you had a really great time listening to me explain this entire thing to you but i'm sure you're asking keenan okay this is great but i didn't come here to to read i didn't come here to read about this stuff i want you to actually show me where this is being used in popular games that are successful because what do you know what do you know well, let's go ahead and jump on over to Overwatch, and I'm going to show you. I'm going to dissect these characters in those three simple ways. And I'm going to show you exactly what's happening. So see, take a look here. We got hero, hero, hero. Oh, but we got villain at the end, Junkrat. Interesting. But let's go ahead and break these down. So what is May when you actually get to it? What, what did they come into the, the meeting and say, guys, we need to create a character. Uh, we need to create this type of character for our game. Well, I'll bet you that they said that they wanted her to be an explorer type character because she looks like someone who would be ice climbing, right? In Antarctica. Um, but then what is the spin? Now, do you remember what spins can be? Source of power, history, interesting obsessions. Well, she's a scientist. So her interests are ice, that's a source of power, and robotics. She has the little, 
a character that, that sits on her back and she created her gun out of a hairdryer, which is really cool. So <laughs> obviously she's smart. So those are the types of things that will add an interesting spin because do you see how when you take those things away, if you were to take away the ice and robotics, then all that, all that you have now is just a cute Chinese explorer girl, which is fine on its own. But now we need something to really set it off, and that is the spin. Going over to D.Va, okay, we got the mech pilot. Everybody is familiar with that. Oh, another really good way to think of tropes is what is familiar. When people look at your artwork, I used to get really offended by this. People would look at my artwork and they'd say, oh, it looks like this. Oh, it reminds me of this. And I would always used to think, it, uh, think that they were saying that I was stealing something or uh, copying something. When in actuality, you are. But them saying that is actually a good start. You want people to look at your designs. You want them to look at your art and say, oh, this feels familiar. I've seen this somewhere before. I can relate to this. Because if they can't do that, then you're losing a major opportunity for your viewer to connect with your work. Okay, or your employer in this case to connect with your concept, your idea. They need something to latch onto. So you come to them and say, hey, I got this idea for a hero. It's going to be a mech pilot girl. Oh, kind of like uh, Neon Genesis. Oh, kind of like uh, Gurren Lagann, right? Oh, okay, we know about anime uh, mech pilots. Awesome, okay. But then you say, but listen, she's going to be a pro gamer, right? StarCraft pro gamer, and she's going to have rabbit motifs. Oh, isn't that awesome, right? So you give that over. You send something like that over to your concept artist, and now they're going to have a wealth of ideas because they have things to create uh, spins. They have the spin that can kind of get their mind going, get their creative juices flowing, and uh, yeah, you'll have a good time with that. Genji, ninja, super easy, but the mixture is cybernetic, right? That's, that could be his source of power. And then we have resurrected. This goes back to talking about history, something interesting that's happened to the character that will play into uh, what their visual design looks like. Genji is now almost fully cybernetic because he had to be rebuilt. So finally, let's move on to Junkrat because we had all these heroes. We need a villain in there too. Uh, so basically, when you look at Junkrat, what is he? Well, he's actually a biker. He's got a lot of biker tropes. Uh, and a lot of the things, like he's got a giant tire on his back. And a lot of things are reminiscent of someone who would be a biker. But what is the mixture? What is the spin that's been added? Oh, well, he's a pyromaniac and he's also a robber or a thief. And when you add the, all those things together, then I'm not saying that just by coming up with these words, they like instantly thought of junk rap. No, these artists came up with hundreds, if not thousands of different ideas to, to finally land at this final stage, okay? So, uh, make no mistake, just by picking out these three words doesn't mean you're gonna end up with characters like Overwatch, but it is going to get you on the right direction, it's gonna keep you in the right mental game, so that way you can come up with interesting ideas that are still familiar. Okay, so let's move on to the next stage. Let's move on to the next stage, and this has to do with stealing ideas. This has to do with Say that you actually like the Overwatch characters, or you like another character from an, an anime, and you want to create something like that. Now, I don't want you guys to be afraid of stealing stuff. I've talked to you guys about this properly before, or, or like how to properly steal. And actually, all you have to do, and I'm going to show you this right here, because hey, everybody knows Taz, right? Looney Tunes. This is a lovable character, something that has been established for many years, uh, and it is a character that people know and love. Now let's say that we are creating a character for our video game and we wanted to create uh, something like this. Well, we have uh, a chaotic neutral character, which basically means they're not necessarily evil or good, but they are chaotic. They don't necessarily follow the exact rules of the world, right? Their sense of morality isn't exactly there. Um, we have an anthro, right? A furry character drawn with sort of more human proportions, or at least like human features. He's got arms, right? He's got a giant mouth and big arms. Uh, and he's a Tasmanian devil. Okay, well, isn't that interesting? And then what is the spin? Well, the spin in this case is that he spins. He actually spins. That's his source of power. So I want to show you guys that just by changing one thing, you can land yourself with a brand new character. And uh, it is lovable and interesting, familiar, yet it is, stands, it is able to stand on its own. Okay? Now, look at this. Crash Bandicoot. Boom. Super easy, everything else is the exact same thing. Chaotic neutral, it's an anthro. We just changed the animal that it was, and it spins. Yet people don't attack Crash Bandicoot for being like, oh, you guys just ripped off Taz, right? Or maybe they did, but it's like, it's still just different enough that it stands on its own. And that's what I want you guys to understand. Don't feel like you have to reinvent the wheel. Go back to Overwatch and you can be like, okay, well, I also wanna make a mech pilot girl, 
right? But what is the different spin? What is the, or actually maybe we could make, we could, because there we actually change the trope. So I wonder what we could change there. So instead of a mech pilot, maybe the, it could still be a mech, but maybe it could be a different type of mech. I don't know exactly, but I was going to say like, a, like a, it could be like a junkyard mech, but she has that skin too, which may be how they came up with that skin. But uh, you could add different spins on things. You could just change those things up because everybody loves mech pilots. There's tons of ways to do that, tons of spins you can throw on it. Um, so don't feel that just because someone else has done it that you can't just change one tiny thing and make it your own. Okay, but case in point. Case in point, okay? I like to back my stuff up. Let's go ahead and talk about this because we have, oh, our types, heroes and anti-heroes, okay. Very, very common, very, very common archetype. Then we have Pirate Girl. Pirate Girl has now become our new trope. Who hasn't ever heard of a Pirate Girl? Okay, everybody knows that, right? It's familiar, it's, it's an idea that's already been done. In fact, it's kind of been done to death, but that's okay because people like it, it's familiar. But how are we gonna make that different? How are we gonna make it different? Well, in this case, look at these four characters right here. They're exactly the same trope, but how have they been made different? Well, let's take a look at the spins. The spins in this case have been changed, which is most often what you're gonna be doing. Uh, a good word of advice is that if you wanna create a character for your game or your comic, and you wanna build it off of a character that already exists, or something that you like personally, just think about keeping everything the same, except just change the spin, change the obsession, change the flaw, change the, oh, it could also be like a strength, strength, weakness, uh, source of power, the type of thing that they are. You can also mix in other tropes. So let's go ahead and run down this list. So Misfortune, we've mixed in another trope, you could say, Gunslinger, to Pirate Girl, okay? And then also we've made her very sexy. So there we go. Just those two words alone can already set us up for our own character. She also has other things going on. There's lots of other nuances, don't get me wrong. I just like to simplify things to basically the, the meat and potatoes of what the character is. Right, but you also have like this big flowy hair and then a lot of the designs that go into her clothing. That stuff is actually what we're gonna be getting into next. But I wanted to start here. I wanted to start here because you guys need to understand the importance of starting with the mental game. You need to make sure that you're laying a proper foundation. That's why we're calling it character foundations <laughs> before you're able to build a visual style off of that, okay? Next one up, this one's my own personal character, okay? So obviously I am biased, but I said, okay, let's make a pirate girl, but in this case, it's like Apocalypse. Let's add Apocalypse, let's add Mad Max to it, so they're like a biker pirate type thing, and uh, possibly maybe have like a cyborg, like alteration in there somewhere, yet to be revealed. But <laughs> let's go ahead and move on over to uh, Ruby Hart. So Ruby Hart is also a pirate from Marvel vs. Capcom 2, but the difference between this one is that she fights with magic and hand-to-hand -hand combat. Uh, she like controls like these wave looking things and she can turn herself into a giant fireball for reasons, I guess, but regardless, it makes her different enough that she stands on her own. And then finally we have, uh, is it May? I think it's May from Guilty Gear. Yeah, and again, Pirate Girl, but now we just have Little Girl, Big Anchor, okay? All those things together create memorable, lovable characters, yet they're all familiar. You can look at any of these, any of these, and you should know basically what's going on. So let's go ahead and finish up here, guys, because this one is supposed to be a little bit shorter. But I will end with a little bit of a, a little bit of a thoughtful, because you guys have been asking for thoughtfuls, and I've been wanting to like mix it in. I like mixing in practical, practical advice into these things, because I know that this course was truly designed because I want to give you guys the information that is truly going to make you start something. Right, because it's really nice to watch a time lapse of an art show or watch somebody else do something or even give a tutorial and then at the end you feel like, oh wow, I feel smarter because I watched somebody else do something. But these shows were designed to actually get you interested in researching things for yourself. And hopefully what I'm doing here is just giving you things that I've picked up on, giving you keys and little tiny insights that I've noticed over the years while I've been working in the industry uh, that I think can really boost you. Okay, so the last thing that I want to end on, and this is what we're going to be going into next week, and that is actually designing the visuals of the character. Uh, now that we have the mental game, now that we have a proper foundation laid for 
the beginnings of our character design, we want to start thinking about visual. And one of the most important things that I've found when doing something visually is creating a memorable silhouette. Now, I'm sure you can look at all these characters and you know exactly who they are. And that is because the artists knew what they were doing. The artists knew that they wanted to create something that was instantly recognizable. They wanted something to basically embody all of these tropes. And, and speaking of that, take a look at these characters. And can you pick out the archetype? Hint, it's probably hero or anti-hero, right? That one's the easy one. But then can you pick out the trope? Can you pick out the thing that describes these characters? And then the spin. What is the spin that's been added to these characters to make them different? And that is going to end it. So the last thing I want to follow up with is uh, something that I, it was a little note that I made on my phone. And it goes back to what I was just saying a couple minutes ago. And that is the true key to motivation. The true key to motivation, and I actually found it while I was working on this, is actually, a lot of people ask me this. It's like, oh man, I just, I, I get, like, I want to do this, right, Keenan? I want to become a concept artist. I want to work in the industry. I really feel like I can do it. Oh man, but I just, I feel like my motivation just goes away sometimes. I, I feel like I don't know what to draw, or I get art block, or just any combination of words that leads to a lack of motivation. And I've actually found the true key to motivation. And it's just as simple as this. It's basically what I just showed you right here. It is research. It is getting interested in what you're actually going to do. Laying out facts, studying other people's work, right? Or just studying a little bit. Don't get, again, don't get too caught up in just watching information. Never mistake information, getting information with actually becoming smarter, right? You've watched something and you've gotten it, but the real difference that's gonna make it well, basically, whether or not you're gonna make it in the industry is whether or not you're gonna do something with it, right? I've given you a couple things. There's plenty of other people on YouTube that are giving you tutorials and ideas, basics, uh, inter some intermediate stuff. I'm really trying to fill in that gap there, right? There's not a lot of intermediate stuff that I've been able to find. Uh, and then there's some advanced things, but sometimes that's way out of, like you just don't even know what to do with that information yet. So find the stuff that works well for you. Do stuff like, uh, do stuff like researching characters that you found, that you enjoy. Try to break it down into these three simple steps. And you might be surprised with how naturally, once you start building this information, once you start laying the facts out, you'll then start to become more motivated. And it's because, honestly, you understand it. It's because you're starting to understand what's going on. You're understanding how things work. And when you get that, when you understand how things work, then automatically you're going to find yourself Coming a lot more interested and motivated to do it. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, so thank you so much for joining me for Character Design 1, Character Foundations on YouTube. Thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't. My name is Ken Lafferty. I will see you guys next week. I want to see some awesome characters. I want you guys to start coming up with some interesting designs, interesting designs using these three pillars, and then get ready to start designing visually next week. Okay? So you guys take care of yourselves. I will treat you to some lovely lane. By the way, I noticed some of you have been saying that... Uh, hasn't been showing up for you. Uh, don't forget, we have moved over to Instagram. You can see it there. Hashtag CanKaleFanArt. Head on over there. Make sure you're submitting your stuff. Tagging it there. Till next time, guys. Take care. So much good art. I love this stuff. No? <laughs> you got something you want to say? <laughs> I turned it back on so I could talk about how cool this art is. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much. See you guys soon.